I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I trust you are well and that your souls and your spirits are prospering. I come before you to share another message. In a previous episode, I shared on the three do's or the three things or three points that you need to take note of when it comes to dreams. The first do is that we must always seek the interpretation of a dream from, from God in line with Romans chapter 8 verse 14 and also verse 26 to 27 of the same chapter. And the second point in the three tools about dreams is that we must wait upon God to orchestrate the fulfillment of a dream. And then the third two is that we must remember that every dream about uh, one's future is like God's promise upon a person's life. Faith is critical in the fulfillment of a dream. So now to the three tones of uh, dreams or about dreams. Number one, do not shop around the interpretation of a dream from sources that are disconnected from God. In the book of Genesis chapter 41, in the book of Genesis chapter 41, in Genesis chapter 41, I'm going to read from verse 14. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you, that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. If a dream is coming from God, only God can interpret the dream. For born again believers, the first thing to do when you receive a dream is to pray to God to give you the interpretation in your heart or in your mind, in your subconscious mind. Yeah, because we're not talking about the heart in simple layman's language. We are talking about the subconscious mind, the innermost part of a person's conscious being, the, your subconsciousness, if I may put it that way. That's where God will put his impressions to tell you the meaning of your dream. We don't normally recommend that a person shops around for the interpretation even from the so-called born again Christians. What if the person is speculating uh, in interpreting your dream? They're just doing guesswork. You, you need to have your own impressions about the dream from the Spirit of God. And then you seek a second opinion in order to just test the interpretation that you have. But in the ordinary run of things, when God gives you a dream, he also gives you the interpretation provided you ask from him. Because the word of God says in John chapter 14 verse 26, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will teach us all things. I believe part of all things that we need to learn from the Spirit of God is this art of interpreting dreams. I believe the Holy Spirit is ready to impart that ability in us. And then Point number two, the second don't when it comes to dreams, do not actively seek to fulfill the dream using human ideas or human means. Why is that imperative for us to take note of or to avoid? Because of what is written in Isaiah chapter 55, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to verse 10. The Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from he heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the soul, 
and bread to the eater, verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. So if a message is coming, truly coming from God, only God has got the spiritual know-how or the technical know-how or the supernatural means to orchestrate its fulfillment. So do not actively seek to fulfill the dream using human ideas. If the dream is a command, go back to God and ask him how to obey that command. Don't improvise, don't come up with your own ideas of how to fulfill the command given in a dream because you may short circuit the operations of the Spirit of God. My last point in this brief message is do not put a timeline to a dream's fulfillment. Why? Because according to Acts chapter 1, according to Acts chapter 1, when we read verse 6 and verse 7, this is what the Bible says, Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. Therefore, when they had come together, referring to the disciples of Jesus Christ, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So if God gives you a dream, it's clear that the events that he has uh, shown you or that he has revealed to you in the dream, they are going to occur according to his own timeline. It's highly unlikely that God can give you a dream, especially a dream about your future, and then there is no definite timeline. Your duty, is, your duty is to wait in patience and not put a specific timeline to the fulfillment of a dream because that would lead to frustration. So I believe with these few points, your faith has been encouraged. I also want you to take note of what is written in Second Peter. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, starting from verse 8, but, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness or slowness or delay, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So even when it comes to our eternal salvation, the Bible says God is not slow. But... Uh, for that point to be put across, the Bible starts by saying in verse 8 that a day is as a thousand years. So what may take human beings thousands of years or a thousand years to fulfill, God can easily accomplish that in a day. And then a thousand years is as a day. So a very long period of time to God is just like a short period of time. So if a thousand years is like a day, then a century is like a few hours to the Almighty God. So that simply means that we need to be patient in our dealings with God. So I believe these three dawns have encouraged your faith and refocused you in your quest to fulfill the dreams that God has been giving you. May the Almighty God bless you.